Okay, well, thank you very much. Thank you, Ji and Rango, for, for, the, for the presentations. It is uh, great to be in this classroom. Again, I presented this paper, not this paper, a different paper, in this exact same classroom uh, about five years ago. Uh, it was, it was a different topic. But anyways, today I'll be presenting some uh, work with uh, Jose Mar Martinez. The title of the paper is Community Price Shocks and Child Mortality, Evidence from Anti-Coca Policies in, in Peru. So the objective of this paper is, is twofold. The, the first objective is to identify a, a causal re relationship between agricultural commodity price shocks and child, mor child mor mortality. And the second uh, objective is to be able to shed some light on the, on the pathways, the, the, the mechanisms that are uh, behind, behind this. The big picture motivation for doing this is that income, aggregate income, is more volatile in agricultural settings. And it's also the case that most of the poor live in uh, agricultural settings. And given the prevalence of credit con constraints and market imper imperfections, we worry that the poor will not be able to weather an aggregate income shock and therefore, some of the uh, welfare di dimensions, such as child health, may be at, at risk. Now, we, we started this paper because there is uh, a literature on aggregate income shocks and uh, child mor mortality. However, the, the evidence for the developing uh, countries is, is quite mixed. Some, sometimes we find that mortality increases, sometimes we find that, that it does, does not. So what we wanted to do with this paper was to get a clear natural ex experiment and be able to identify what are the, the channels at, at play and then shed some light on potentially why are we getting these mixed results in the, in the literature. Uh, so to fix ideas, let's, let's think a little bit about a, a theoretical framework. So let's, let's assume that the uh, production of child health depends on two goods, right? Uh, we can have uh, health promoting goods, think about medicines, right? And, and time, time-intensive health in investments. Think about going to fetch clean water, uh, hy hygiene, and many other things that do matter for uh, the health of a child, but do not necessarily represent a monetary cost. Right? And now let's, let's assume that, that wages uh, drop, uh, say because of some, some commodity price drop. And the question is, well, what happens with child health? And the problem is that the, the effect, in fact, is theoretically uh, ambiguous. Uh, expenditures in the uh, presence of market imper imperfections may go down, so house households may not be able to weather the, the shock, therefore uh, they may reduce their, their con consumption and they may reduce their consumptions of uh, some nutritious foods, also uh, the, the health, health prom promoting goods. But then what is not very clear is what happens with the supply of labor of the primary caregiver, right? So if we think about maternal labor su supply, uh, when wages are lower, what should be happening with a regular uh, supply curve is that you should be working less if they are paying you less. But in developing country settings, what we sometimes see is that, in fact, people supply more labor to compensate for, for the income shock. So we have these, these two opposite di directions, uh, and then we, we do not really get a clear pre pre prediction there. We also face a, a challenge, which is an, an identification challenge, and really trying to get uh, to the causal effects. And we may be seeing selective mi migration, or we may be seeing selective fer fertility uh, in response or in anticipation to the shocks. And therefore, uh, it, it, it gets a bit tricky. So what we will try to do in this paper is, is try to get this right, the, the, uh, the identification uh, challenge right, and be able to put signs, what is positive and negative here, and then con conclude what is happening here in this, in this par particular setting. Okay, so what we do is we exploit an, a natural experiment in the Peruvian uh, coca industry. As you know, probably uh, coca is the main input for the production of, of cocaine. And what we do is we will exploit an, an, uh, an abrupt price change, a price drop, uh, that came because of some foreign policy that I will explain uh, later. It represented about a 50% drop in the price uh, for the producers of the coca leaf, right? So from one year to the, to the next, they were seeing 50% less uh, on, on farm gate prices. And as I will explain later, we will use uh, variation across the space and on the cultivation of coca and the, the variation over time of this uh, abrupt de decline in the, in the price and several data sets to be able to, to pin down what is happening with child mor mortality and the behavioral responses of the, of the household. I will give you a preview of the results now, and then I will go into some of the highlights of the, of the, of the paper. So what we find is that the 50% uh, 
price drop is equivalent to a 5 to 9% increase in child mortality. That, 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 that is an, an, an important effect. And we're also to pin down where are these uh, life losses happening. We, we see there are losses in, in utero. Then we see that the babies that, that survive in utero are smaller at birth. And then we also see increased mortality uh, during the first years of, of life. When we look at the mechanisms, we see that households do reduce their total ex expenditures, so they're not able to totally cope with the shock, and they reduce health expenditures uh, in about 30%. Per in addition, we see that mothers uh, increase their labor su supply when, when prices drop. They try to get uh, additional paid uh, income. And we have evidence that they are reducing their time at home and additional evidence uh, of, of uh, investments in, in health. So we see, for instance, there are fewer prenatal checks being done. Uh, there are higher risk delivers risk being done at home instead of at a hospital or, or, a, or a health post. Right? So we, we find uh, evidence that there are investments in the production function uh, of health that are dim diminishing, and then we, we are consistent with the decrease in, uh, sorry, with the increase in, in mortality. We're also able to look at some heterogeneous effects and, and see the differences of what is happening with some districts in Peru. Districts are the smallest administrative unit. So if we look at, at, the, at wealthier districts, these are still poor, but wealthier uh, districts, then we see that there's no increase in, mor in mortality. We find that they're able to smooth their con consumption and, and mothers uh, react differently, they, they work less, in fact, which is consistent with what we see in, in the literature in developed country settings. So what we find here also tries to put you know, the, the signs to the mechanisms I was mentioning, but then we're also able to predict differently uh, the, the impact in, mor in, mor in mortality based on the baseline characteristics of wealth of the, of the districts with this shock. Okay. Now, let me have a few words on the setting, and then I will go into the, the identification and the, and the main results. Coca, as you may know, is, is, as I was saying, the main input for the production of, of, of cocaine. It's only produced in, in three countries in the world, Bolivia, Peru, and Colombia. And at the time, uh, at the time of, of this, that the period of analysis for this study, Peru was the most important pro producer in the, in the world. 60% of the production in the world came from Peru, and Bolivia and Colombia were producing the remaining uh, 20 per percent. Most of the production goes to the legal market. There's a legal market too, but most of the production goes into the legal market. And um, you know the the way this market is arranged is very uh, it's not very vertically integrated, especially back back then. We will have small scale farmers usually producing producing about an hectare of of coca, uh, which will then sun dry the coca leaves, sell them to some middleman. This middleman will either sell it to someone else or by himself, if he had the, te the technology, will transform big amounts, big volumes of uh, coca leaves into coca paste, which is an intermediate uh, product. About an hectare of coca uh, leaves will make one kilo of, of coca paste, so the, the volume is definitely uh, uh, shrinked. And then it will be uh, smuggled through different roads uh, in, the, in the Amazon jungles, and at a time, small airplanes will ferry coca paste from uh, the jungles in Peru into Colombia, and then Colombia, in Colombia, the, the process will be refined uh, from coca paste into cocaine, and then finally exported to, to North American markets. Uh, what we see here is, is the map of Peru, and as you can see, there's almost a, a perfect diagonal line uh, in the country. The, the districts, the smallest administrative units, I was saying in red, are uh, the, the producers of the, of the coca leaf. And the reason why they are grouped here is because of the, the agricultural suitability needed to produce the, the, the coca leaf. So what we have here are the Andean's mountain and to the right, the, the Amazons. And it's exactly in those slopes and, and sunlight and all that that these, these leaves are able to, to, to grow. If you look at the maps of, of Bolivia and Colombia, you will also see a spatial con concentration there. So what we exploit is the shift of the policy from Central American countries uh, to uh, the focus of, of the interdictions to the so-called source countries, so Bolivia, Peru, and, and Colombia. And in particular, a policy called the Airbridge Denial, which was a uh, policy promoted by uh, foreign governments and that Colombia and Peru did by uh, forcing the landing of these small airplanes that were ferrying coca from uh, the Amazon jungles 
into uh, the, the Colombian uh, jungle. The policy was uh, enacted in, in the end of 1994 and started in 1995. What we see here is, is the, the real price of the coca leaf. And what happened right after 1994, when it's enacted in 1995, is a 50% drop in the price of, of coca. Um, the anecdotal evidence of the implementation and the stringency of the policy follows quite nicely, in fact, the, the pattern that, that we see in the, in, the, in the prices. From the point of view of the producer of, of coca, right, from the, from the farmers, this is a negative demand shock. They don't have anyone else to sell their coca to, their, 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 their coca leaves to. And in fact, uh, this, this period here is known as the, as the crisis of coca, the, the crisis of coca. There are there's no evidence of farmers leaving their, their uh, lands and their crops to try to find temporarily better, better jobs because the, the prices were so low, we don't know really, but the prices were so low that anecdotally they were not covering the costs of, of, of producing coca. So what we do for identifying the impacts of, of this price shock on, on mortality is we will be comparing cohorts of children born in the very first year uh, of the implementation of the policy. This is in 1995. These are children that would have been or were born in 1995, conceived the year before. We com we're comparing them to the cohorts immediately before them, the 1994 and the 1993 cohorts. And we're going to do this comparison continuously across the map of Peru. Right? So, so Basically, we're building a uh, difference in difference a, a strategy comparing cohorts of children over time and across the space, uh, depending on how much coca there was being grown um, in each district uh, at, at baseline, right? So before the implementation of the, of, the, of the policy. Now, I have to say a few things about how we measure mor 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 mortality. But, but first, let me tell you, the, the main exploratory variable is going to be a, a, a measure of the potential coca revenues. In, the, in each district. So for each district, we will have a measure of how much coca there was being planted before the policy. And then we will interact that with the uh, price, right? the, the, the price at the, at the national level uh, for, each, for each year. And to measure more mortality, things get a bit trickier, right? because uh, as you may imagine, there are no really good admin records for, for these uh, areas. Uh, we shouldn't be expecting to have very good admin records in most developing countries, I would say. Um, but then we could use, for instance, something like uh, demographic and health service, right? D D DHS data, and try to relocate children back in time exactly to where they were born. Unfortunately, DHS data does not show us where people were born. They just show us the, the year of birth. So what we do is we, we look at census data, and we're going to use a missing children approach as our preferred estimation, and then we're also going to be using the, the DHS data, uh, as I will show you later. But what we do is we use a, um, we will be using a, a population census that took place 13 years after the policy, in 2007. And with that census, we're going to relocate people to the place where they were born at the district level and the year that they were born. And with that, we're going to create counts of people. We're going to create cohort sizes at that district year cell. So in 1995, in District X, 10 people you know, were born there. In this other place, nine people were born there. And we're going to infer how much mortality or excess mortality there was in relationship to this uh, shock by knowing how many people were, were missing. Right? Uh, so the, the idea is that um, if we see that there's a systematic relationship between the price drop and lower counts of people, lower counts of, of, of survivals, then we can classify that as excess mor mortality. That also has a couple of, of um, ad advantages, and, and is that uh, cohort sizes will also give us an idea of, of in utero losses, which is something we wouldn't see just by comparing uh, children that were actually born and if they died later. And it also uh, picks up on uh, mortality taking place later in life. So DHS data, for instance, will ask for mortality uh, of children under five, here we will get more mortality of, of children even uh, at further points in time if that were to happen. Okay. Well, we, we include a, a bunch of controls, and as I was saying at the beginning, a key on, on our estimation is we're going to be looking at this very narrow window, trying to get away of, of any endogenous variation that happens later. Right? In 1996, a year after the policy, we would think, okay, families are already doing something, they are averting more pregnancies and, and, and so on. Now let me walk through, through the main uh, tables. 
I'm going to show you a bunch of tables like, like this. They, they look quite similar. Uh, we have the, the main dependent variable here. I'll be telling you which are the samples that, that we're using here. And here we have the, the coefficient of that main explanatory variable. And we're going to be focusing on the implied uh, effects. The implied effects are the, the effects at the, at the, for the median, sorry, for the mean uh, coca district, and given the 50% price drop uh, that took place in 1995. The first two columns here are focusing in on the cohorts 1993 to 1995. So this is the first cohort exposed, and the two year, and the, the two previous ones, and these are robots that check only at the, at the very narrow window of 1994 and what we see is that uh, cohorts are reduced with the price drop, so there is excess mor mortality increasing. Uh, the, the cohorts are 0.4 to 0.5% smaller. This translates, in fact, to a, a lot of uh, additional mor mortality if we were to attribute it, for instance, to mortality after birth. Right? Uh, so this is about 5 to 9% for the baseline level of child mor mortality in this setting. We also use the demographic and health surveys. Uh, Again, this is not our preferred estimation method because of the, the district of birth is not available there. But we're able to show some evidence that there are in utero losses, uh, losses taking, taking place. We do that by adapting this cohort strategy to the probability of seeing a live birth. We are also able to see that uh, children after being born alive are also more likely to die in the first couple of years of, of life. We take uh, identification very seriously, so we, we try to do a bunch of robustness checks. We ask questions, for instance, okay, who will be more likely to avert uh, mort mortality? Do we see any, um, any characteristics of mothers, for instance? Uh, are wealthier mothers uh, better uh, to, to avert births? And so it's not an impact of the shock, it's an impact of, of, the, of the behavioral anticipation. And we do not find anything like, like that. We find, for instance, that is uh, poorer women uh, who are experiencing mo most of the, of the losses, which is what one would, would, would predict. We find evidence of the survival of the disadvantage of males. Males are more likely to die both in utero and early life, and we are able to predict that. Where we uh, do not pick up any, any uh, pre-trends, and, and the results are also robust to, to a bunch of, of controls. Now let me walk you through, through the mechanisms. Uh, what we have here in the dependent variable is uh, log real expenditure per capita. And again, we have the, the implied effect here. What this is showing us is that total expenditures are falling about 7%. But then expenditures in food, which are important, and health expenditures are decreasing quite a bit, in about 20%. So, so we know that the, the first mechanism we're thinking about, right, the, the health-promoting goods, are probably de decreasing uh, here. Then we use additional data from before and after the shock, different household surveys. And we look at what is happening on the labor market. And we see that first, only if we look at only females, uh, females are more likely to start working for, uh, sorry, to, to have a, a paid uh, a job uh, in, in three percentage points over a baseline of, of 40, uh, sorry, uh, 54 per percent. They're working more hours, and they're also more likely to spend less time on household chores. Of course, we don't see in the, in the survey how much, time are you, how much time are you actually putting to your, to your children? But, but, uh, but we, we do have a question on, on household chores. For, for males, um, we do not see changes in the extensive margin. We do not see they're more likely to work, but most of them in this age group were already working. Um, they are not more likely to be working more hours or to change their household chores. There's, there's, there are also papers on this shock on, on, on child labor, and we see those margins also uh, being, being moved. And is that People who were not working as much for paid uh, uh, work before are usually the, the margins that work as insurance here, right? They, they're going to be starting to work more to, to make some more, some more income. If we look at mothers, mothers of children zero to five, relative to other women, uh, it is the case that mothers are also working more. So, so it, it is not the, the childless uh, women, it is mothers in, in, in general. They're working more, they're working more hours, and they are uh, having less time uh, on, on household chores. Finally, we try to look at uh, the health investments. And, and this is the result, probably, of the combination of these two mechanisms, right? Households have less money to spend, and they are spending less in health, and households, uh, uh, primary caregivers are also uh, uh, 
have less time now because they're working uh, more for, for a pay. What we see is that children, uh, zero to five years of age, are not necessarily more likely to be sick, but they are much less likely to be taken to the doctor uh, when they are sick. We also see that pregnancies, uh, when women are pregnant, they are uh, less likely to uh, have at least one prenatal care appointment. Uh, the number of prenatal care, uh, care appointments uh, de 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 decreases. There's a higher likeliness of uh, observing a delivery at home, uh, which is also a higher risk type of delivery for this type of settings, uh, and therefore uh, a lower probability of, of the birth being assisted by a medical prof professional. Now to to, to finish, let me show you the, the heterogeneous effect, where I was mentioning at the beginning of, of different predictions depending on, on, the, on the baseline income uh, of these districts. So here we will classify districts into very high poverty and very uh, and, 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 and low poverty. And first I'm showing you the labor market outcomes of women, then uh, the real expenditure per capita, so the two main mechanisms here, and then what is happening to the, to the cohort size, our measure of excess mor mortality. We see that for the high poverty districts, uh, women are working more, more hours, less time on household chores. Uh, for lower poverty districts, women are working less. That's the prediction of a regular you know, slope of, 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 the, of the supply of labor. And we don't find a statistical effect uh, here, but it is telling that the, the, the sign is positive on, on the household chores. Uh, for expenditure, higher poverty districts, we see the, the decrease uh, in, in expenditures overall and also in health. We do not see that uh, for, for the lower poverty districts, the sign is negative. They, they are probably not able to smooth consumption completely, but much better than the high poverty ones. And then overall, we see the decrease in cohort size, so the increase in mortality for the high poverty districts. And we do not see an increase in mortality in the low poverty districts. If anything, uh, the, the, the rates of mortality may be decreasing, which is what we find in, in, in uh, countries like the US, for instance, when with the fluctuation of, of unemployment. Okay, so thank you very much. I'll, I'll conclude there uh, just by, by saying that what we try to do in this paper is exploit a, a careful natural experiment in Peru, and we try to pin down what are the mechanisms at play that explain why an agricultural commodity price shock may result uh, in the increase of uh, child mortality. Thank you very much.